about it. Last time we came, Ikhwani was dealing with our weekly class about the Shema ila al-Muhammadiyyat wal-Imam al-Tirmidhi rahmatullahi ta'ala alayhi. Many brothers didn't know that last week I had come back from the trip that I took and they didn't attend and even the one who records the classes, he didn't show up. So we missed that particular class in terms of the recording as well. Today, the last class before the blessed month of Ramadan, inshallah, is also going to be suspended, especially in light of the fact that we only have a few hadith from the last chapter. But they are important hadith dealing with different aspects of the personality and the person of al-mujtaba, al-mustafa, sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sallam. As we mentioned so many times, the shama'il al-muhammadiyyah, it's just not a book about the Prophet's thought was like this, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. His imama was like that. The gravy that he ate was like this. No, it's more than that. It's getting the person, the Muslim, to comprehend and to understand. We don't go overboard in any human being. We connect ourselves to the Prophet of Islam, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and his companions, radwanullahi alayhim. And the way we connect ourselves to them is in a way that is legislated. Not in the way of al-ghulu, like Ahl al-Kitab, al-Yahudu, and nasara But in the way that has been legislated. So with the ulama and the shiyukh from before and from now and in the future, inshallah, we have love, honor, respect, and reverence for them. For our elders, anyone who has a position of importance, we have respect for them. But we don't have a gulu in anyone. We worship Allah by himself, alone. And the Prophet Wasallam brought that dawah. He brought the dawah where he prohibited people from his companions from going overboard in him. And if anyone has the right for the regular Beni Adam to go overboard in them, they are the prophets and the messengers. But when the prophets and the messengers came, Salawatullahi Wasallam wa alayhim ajma'in, they stopped the people from that. Isa ibn Maryam and other than Isa ibn Maryam. Our Nabi, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, is the one we connect ourselves to unconditionally. We hear him, we obey him, and even with that, we don't go overboard. We don't go overboard. So in connecting the community to his illustrious personality, what he did, how he looked, what he ate, what he wore, and all of those other issues, it's an attempt to bring the people back to the square, especially the people of the Sunnah, al Hadith, people of the Salafiyyah, because Salafi people have gone overboard. Not in the Prophet, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Ya late, only if they went overboard in the Prophet. Not that that's okay, but if they did that, Alhamdulillah, but they go overboard in this Sheikh and that Sheikh. If this Sheikh said it, then it must be revelation, because this Sheikh is Ma'asum when it comes to issues of jahwa ta'adil and other than that. So our community, all of us, are in need of being reminded of the importance of going back to the source, which is the kitab and the sunnah, without having ghulu in the shakhsi or the personality of the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ala kullin, we're going to suspend that last lesson, inshallah, because of the munasaba of Ramadan. So this will be the last time that I appear before you people, inshallah, before the blessed month of Ramadan. And during the time of Ramadan, there is a schedule here where we'll be dealing with different types of issues in terms of the instruction that comes from this particular table. So we wanted to take this opportunity, inshallah, just to remind you brothers of a few things concerning Ramadan and then open up the door for any questions that you may have specifically and exclusively about Ramadan, the ahkam of Ramadan, the adab of Ramadan, different things you may want to know about Ramadan. As it relates to fasting in general, fasting in general, fasting is a tremendous ibadah from the ibadat of al-Islam for many reasons. Allah Azza wa Jal mentioned in the Quran, وَأَن تُسُومُوا خَيْرٌ لَكُمْ لَوْ كُنْتُمْ تَعْلَمُونَ أو إِن كُنْتُمْ تَعْلَمُونَ Fasting is better for you if you only know. Fasting has 
a lot of benefits and it has a lot of rewards. Fasting in general. Prophet Muhammad mentioned sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in Psalm and Yom and Fisa Bili Lahi Ba'adullahu Ta'ala Bihi Wachu and Nari Jahannam Samarin Kharifa. Anyone who fasts one day, Ramadan outside of Ramadan, just fasting one day, Fisa Bili Lahi, Allah will remove his face 70 seasons from the Nar of Jahannam. The man came and he said, Ya Rasulullah, dulluni ala amalin yutkhilni jannah. Ya Rasulullah, tell me about something that if I were to do it, it will get me into the jannah. He told him, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, alayka bisawm, you should fast. Fa innuhu la mathila lahu. Because there is no other thing similar to fasting. And that's because fasting is an ibadah from the ibadat of al-Islam. That the Muslim who is a mawahid, he appreciates the importance in a practical way of al-tawheed, al-ikhlas, al-niyat, al-saliha. Allah mentioned in the hadith al-Qudsi, Bukhari Muslim, as-sawm li wa ana ajzi bi, fasting is for me and me alone, and I alone will reward it. And that's because fasting is the only ibadah from the ibadat of Islam. Only Allah knows whether you're fasting or not. No one else. So we have some youngsters, they go to school, and they're not under the supervision of their parents. And while at school, you don't know if they're fasting or if they're not fasting. And when they come home, you don't know if they fasted or they didn't fast. Your wife doesn't know if you're fasting. You don't know if your wife is fasting. But Allah knows, and as a result of that, Fasting is for Allah, and Allah rewards the fasting. There's no ibadah like it. None whatsoever. None. So it is a tremendous opportunity for the person not to just talk the talk, but to walk the walk. When we talk about a tawheed and al ikhlas, this is an opportunity for an individual to really manifest that reality. Showing the importance of fasting, the Nabi who sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned in yet another hadith from the many hadith. Ya ma'ashir al-shabaab, man istata'a minkum al-ba'a fal yatazawwij, wa man lam yistati' fa'alayhi bil-sawm, fa innahu aghaddu al-basr wa ahsanu al-faruj. Oh you young men, any of you who have the, permit, the ability to get, fat, to get married, hurry up, get married, hurry up, get married. But those of you who don't have the ability, then let them fast. For verily, fasting will cause his eyes to go down. He will have the ghaddul basr. He will lower his gaze. And it is a protection from the private part or for the private part. So we have a built-in institution for the young man or the, for the young woman who, if you're trying to avoid the shahwa, which is something that is normal and is common, Allah, he created human beings like that. So the young boy, the young girl, they have desires. So what's the built-in institution to protect yourself from falling to the haram? It is fasting. A rahmah from Allah Azza wa Jalla that he gave it to you. So the person comes and he says, I'm really having a difficult time managing my shahwa and so forth and so on. You don't have an excuse in Al-Islam. Because Allah knows, as he mentioned in the Quran, Allahu a'lam wa yaj'alu risalata. Allah knew how to make his religion. He knew how to make his religion. Halal and haram, fast from this time to that time. Man can get married to this, woman get married to that, woman dress like that, give this much of your money, make hajj at this place. Allah knew what he was doing. Muhammad is Rasulullah, and Allah Abu Lahab, Abu Jahl. Allah knew what he was doing. And in knowing what he was doing, he just didn't create the human being and he left him like that with his shahwa to overwhelm him. He instituted ibadat, not one ibadah, ibadat to help him. The ibadah of a salat. Inna salata tanha an fahsha'i wal munkar. The salat, if it's being done correctly, it will stop a person from doing fahsha and the evil thing. And also from those ibadat is the ibadah of fasting. The Muslim man, the Muslim woman, the young people from amongst us, they have a, a, the ability to subdue that thing. So the man came 
And he said, Ya Rasulullah, is it permissible for me to kiss my wife? He said, yes, you could kiss your wife. The other man came and said, is it permissible for me to kiss my wife while I'm fasting? Yes, it's permissible. You could do that. The other man came and said, is it permissible for me to kiss my wife while I'm fasting? He said, no. They said, why did you say yes to him, no to him? He said, because that one was a sheikh. He's more in charge and control of his desires. That one was a shab. He was young. I was afraid that he couldn't control himself because the shahwa of the young person is like that. The religion, the religion takes that into consideration. So it is a built-in mechanism. And that's a ni'mah from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when it comes to fasting in general, khwani, fasting has a lot of benefits. It is a kafara. The Prophet mentions sallallahu alayhi wa ala alayhi wa sallam. Fitnatur raju fi ahlihi wa malihi wa jarihi to kafiruha as salat wa sawm wa hajj. Rasulullah said that the fitna that a person has dealing with his family, dealing with his money, his job, the fitna that he has dealing with his neighbor. Fasting is an expiation for that fitna. Salat is an expiation for that fitna. Hajj is an expiation for that fitna. So the person has a job. At his job, he's dealing with people that he argues with. He's dealing with people that he swears at them, they swear at him. He's dealing with people who come into his business in a way that's inappropriate. So he's looking at what's haram. It's fitna. His wife, mother, father, brother, sister, his children. Fitna. They make him say things. They make him do things. They make him feel particular ways. Hey, wallet. Hey, stop what you're doing over there, boy. That type of fitna that the person has to deal with, all of that, fasting is a kafara for him. Just regular fasting. So fasting, we can't say enough about it. He mentions, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, as sawm junnatun yastajunnu biha al abdu min nari jahannam. Fasting is a shield that the slave uses to protect himself from the hellfire. Every time he fasts, one day, Allah removes his face 70 years from the nara of Jahannam. Fasting is a shield. In general, as for Ramadan, hadith wala haraj, when it comes to the virtues of Ramadan. It is enough that Ramadan Ikhwani is a pillar from the pillars of Islam. Like this table right here has four legs. You take one of those four legs, then the stability of the table is going to be compromised. The four legs, they represent the foundation on which the table is resting upon. Your Islam, my Islam, our Islam, it rests firmly upon the shahadatain, the salat, the zakat, a psalm and a hajj. Take one of them away. And there's a big question mark over your Islam. Big question mark. Individual who fasting comes to him and it leaves him. And he doesn't know. It's Ramadan. He fasts some days, doesn't fast other days. That is from the Akbar al-Kabair. Go to the book by Imam al-Dhahabi. Kitab al-Kabair. He mentioned Breaking your fast without a just cause. That is from the, not just the Kabira, it's from the Akbar al Kabair. So the sins are not on the same level. Sins are not on the same level. Some sins are more serious and severe than others. One of the most severest of the Dhanub and the Ma'asi is for the slave who Allah Ta'ala created him, he just breaks his fast. It's from the biggest sins. And when you want to talk about the rahmah of Allah Azza wa Jalla, just look at what I'm going to tell you, inshallah, later on in what I have to tell you about. Someone intentionally breaking his fast by eating, by drinking, or even worse than that, having relationships and becoming weak to his desires during the nahar or the daytime of Ramadan, and he intentionally has relationships with his wife, and he broke this fast. The penalty for that is you have to free a slave. If you can't do that, you have to fast two months consecutively. If you can't do that, you have to feed 60 people. 
because you have made a tremendous indiscretion. From the virtues of fasting Ramadan and fasting in general is Allah Azzawajal has created a bab in the Jannah that is called Ar-Rayyan. No one's going to enter into that door except the people who fast. Some of the ulama said they're the people who fast Ramadan and other than Ramadan. And some of the scholars said no, it's not the people who fast Ramadan because everybody should be fasting in Ramadan. It's the people who fast Ramadan, but they fast the extra days throughout the course of the year. The day of Ashura, they fast Mondays and Thursday. They fast the day of al the white days. They fast the, the, the fast of Dawood and the six days of Shawwal. Al-Muhim, showing the importance. There's not a bab in Al-Jannah for people who made Salat, for people who gave Zakat, for people who made Hajj and Umrah. There is a bab exclusively and specifically for the Sa'imin, the Sa'imin. So there are many virtues concerning the fast. The Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sallam mentioned in an authentic hadith, إِذَا جَاءَ شَهْرُ رَمَضَان فُتِحَتْ أَبْوَابُ الْجَنَّةِ وَغُلِّقَتْ أَبْوَابُ النَّارِ وَصُفِّدَتْ الشَّيَاطِينَ If Ramadan comes, then the doors of al Jannah are open and the doors of the hellfire are closed shut and the shayateen are tied up because it's an opportunity for an individual to get khair. The doors of Jannah are open. The many ways of getting good are there at Taraweeh, Salat in the Masjid, at Dhikr, breaking people's fast, the fact that you are fasting, going to the Masjid, so many issues, reading the Quran, so many, so many issues. Because when you fast, you calm down a little bit before Ramadan comes. Like Hajj people, they reach out to other people say, I'm sorry, can you please forgive me? I don't want to fast this month of Ramadan. I don't want to be like those people, the Prophet mentioned, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they will come a group of people, Yom Qiyama, they'll have the D's like the mountain of Tihama. They have Salat, Zakat, Sadaqa, Som, Hajj, Umrah, Hijab, al They have all of that stuff. And then they'll come, Yom Al-Qiyamah, but their deeds are going to be thrown back at them because they oppressed people. So the individual goes to people and he says, hey, hey, I'm sorry, forgive me for what I did. Because his ruh, because of Ramadan, is calmed down. He's not mutakabbir. He's a person looking for Jannah. And we all know, ikhwani, how we feel, how we behave during the blessed month of Ramadan. So anyway, the doors of the Jannah are open and the doors of the hellfire are closed and the shayateen are tied up, giving an individual the opportunity to make a lot of good deeds. So in the month of Ramadan, the angel says, Hey, fa'il al-khair muqbil. You, the one who wants to do good, come on, come forth and do it. And the one who wants to do evil, get out of here. The Prophet mentions, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, raghima anf man adrakahu ramadan falam yukhfir lahu. May his nose be put in the dirt. May he be disrespected, downtrodden. May he be nothing. The individual, the month of Ramadan comes and it goes. And he wasn't forgiven for what he had done. Because Ramadan is a tremendous opportunity. In it is the month or the day, Laylatul Qadr. Laylatul Qadri khayru min alfi shahr. It is the best night during the course of the year. No night is better than the night of Laylatul Qadr, the one who is praying on that night, the one who is preparing and expecting to fast the next day, the one who is asking Allah istighfar on that particular night, the one who is doing bitter walidain, the one who is doing anything on that particular night, it is like he's doing that thing for a thousand months. It is a tremendous opportunity. So with that being the case, Ikhwani, we have to get ourselves together and in the frame of mind, let us fast the correct way. You know, we're living in a time where mental illnesses are on the spread, intishar. That's one of the signs of Yom Al-Qiyama, mental illnesses. The Prophet told the people, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, inna bayna yaday sa'a al-haraj. Verily, before the hour is established, there is haraj. They said, what is haraj, Ya Rasulullah? That's an Arabic word. 
Haraj or Haruj. That's an Arabic word. And many times he would tell them words, they would say, what is that? Showing that he is Afsahu man nataqa bidad. He's the most eloquent of people. He's the reference for the Arabic language. His sunnah, the Quran. What is Haraj? He said al-qatl. That you will kill, killing, killing, indiscriminately killing people. The companions say, Ya Rasulullah, in one year, in one year, every year, we kill this many from the non-Muslims. We're making jihad, we kill 60,000, 10,000, we kill a lot of people. Why is that so different? I mean, right now, we're killing a lot of people. He said, Lestu ani qatlukum ba'dukum ba'da. I don't mean you killing one another, what I can. He said, I don't mean you killing the mushrikeen, but you killing one another. They thought that was strange. Ajib. They say, Ya Rasulullah, وَهَلْ مَعَهُمْ أَقُولُهُمْ يَوْمَ إِذِنْ The people who will be living that time, will they have their intellects with them? He said, no, the people won't have their intellects with them. The intellect of the majority of the people during that time will be taken away from them. So we're living in a time where mental illness is on the rise. That one has bipolar, that one has OCD, that one has schizophrenia. That one over there, he has anxiety. That one over there, he has depression. And there are different levels of depression. Almost everybody suffers from depression. Almost everybody suffers from depression. So the mental illness can be from mild to severe. People have phobias. This one right here, he's afraid of um, spiders. That one, he's afraid of uh, people who are not from his same color. There's a phobia called xenophobia. Xenophobia. X-E-N-O phobia. That's a person who's afraid of someone who's not from his group. I'm Iraqi. I see someone who's black. Oh, I don't want to deal with him. I don't know him. That's xenophobia. Where well, you're really afraid. All kind of phobias. The lady, she has a phobia. My husband is going to get married to another woman. He, he never said that to her. He's not thinking about that. But she lives like that. He's going to get married to another woman. Going to get married to another woman. And she gets sick. She sees him in the masjid because there's a camera. And he's praying to someone who has more than one wife. She says, oh, ho, ho. He's, mad. he's praying next to the guy who has more than one wife. And she's like that. Phobia. And then there are those people who have a phobia of Ramadan. When Ramadan is coming, they say, oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy. We have to fast all of those hours. Ramadan is difficult. Ramadan. Now, the Muslim doesn't look at Ramadan like that. Ramadan is a golden opportunity. He mentioned, sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sallam, as-salawatu al-khamsa, wal-jum'atu ila al-jum'ati, wa ramadanu ila al-ramadan, mukaffiratu lima baynahunna, ila jhtuni batil kabair. The five prayers that you make every day. When you make fajr, and then you make dhuhr. After making Fajr, the sins that you commit up until Dhuhr time, when you make Dhuhr, it cleans up those sins. After you make Dhuhr, to Asr, Asr cleans up those sins. Maghrib cleans up those sins. Al Isha cleans up those sins. Person stands for Salah with sincerity. Allahu Akbar. When he makes Ruku', his sins fall off of his shoulders. Fall off, the Prophet said. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The five prayers from Juma to Juma. You make Juma, and then the next Juma. When you make that next Juma, that next Juma killed all of those sins for the one who has a job and he never takes off a Juma. He made Juma last week. He's making sin Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. When Juma comes, the next Juma wipes away those previous sins. And from Ramadan to the next Ramadan, it is a mukaffir. It takes away all of those sins. So how in the world is a Muslim going to look at Ramadan as a phobia? Oh, it's very difficult. We're going to be fasting all of these hours. Remember the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam: "Innam al jaza ala qadr al nasab." The reward that you get will be comparable to the difficulty that you go through. So if you fast for a long time. The reward is going to be great. If you have to go from that distance to go to the masjid and it's far and you have to do extra effort, 
the reward is going to be extra. Remember that. That's a qa'id in Islam. Your reward will be comparable to the difficulty that you have to go through. So if the lady is in an environment where they're not wearing hijab, and she's wearing niqab and jilbab and the kafazin in that place, her reward, provided she's not making things unnecessarily difficult for herself, she's going to get a reward, reward comparable to that. And that's why in Mecca, the muhajireen are the best of this ummah because they accepted al-Islam when it wasn't very easy. Whereas people who accept Islam, like right now, you accept Islam, for the most part, it's like uh, a walk through the park. Although you may have some problems, it's not like those companions who were in Mecca, that hostile environment where they would kill you upon the news that they heard even if they thought you were thinking about becoming a Muslim, those people would kill you. So, Akhwani, Fillahi, we should look at the upcoming Ramadan as another opportunity to get the rewards from Allah Azza wa Jalla, from our Dhanu, from our Ma'asi, a Thabat on the religion, all of those issues. Another issue I want to bring to your attention, and we say this, Akhwani, and we say this with all sincerity, and we hope you brothers pay attention to this. Our religion is a religion unlike Christianity and unlike Judaism. It's not difficult for the people. One of the companions of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, his name is Uthman ibn Mad'un. Uthman ibn Mad'un. Radwamullahi alayhi. He used to be a Zahid, Abid. He came to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and said, Ya Rasulullah, give me permission to... Al Khisa. Give me permission to um to castrate myself. Everybody here knows what castration means. Huh? Huh? Yeah, yeah. To castrate my not a khitan, khitan. To castrate myself. Because I want to focus on worshiping Allah. I don't want to be distracted by any women or any, I want to castrate myself. The prophet said no. And the ayat was revealed. This is a monasticism, monasticism that they put on themselves. We didn't write that to them. We didn't tell them to do that. Jews and Christians. The lady is in the synagogue. The lady, the nun is married to God in the, in, in the, in the monastery and they don't get married amongst the priests. No, that's not our religion. They put that on themselves. They made it difficult on themselves. It's not our religion. Islam is a religion that made things easy. Another abid, Amr, Ibn al-As, Ridwan Allahi alayhi. That man used to fast every single day. Abu Darda used to fast every single day. When the Prophet found out about him, he told them, don't do that. Don't do that. Allah doesn't want that from you. You have to give Allah his rights, your family his right. You got to give yourself your rights. He didn't allow them to do that. He said fast three times in every month. Don't go overboard. Our religion is easy. Now, in Ramadan, it shows the ease of Al-Islam in many ways. So don't make things difficult on yourself. And those ayahs that were mentioned about Ramadan, Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu kutiba alaykum usiyam, all of those ayahs, shahrul Ramadan alladhi unzila fi al-Qur'an, all of those ayahs. At the end of the ayah, Allah Ta'ala mentioned, yuridu Allahu bikum al-yusr wa la yuridu bikum al-usr. Allah wants ease for you. He doesn't want difficulty for you. So what does that mean? نَحْنُ مَعْشُرُ الْأَنْبِيَاءُ مِرْنَا بِثَلَاثَةً All of the prophets were ordered to do three things. Three things. Two of them, when you want to fast, and the suhoor, delay it as close to fajr time as possible. Don't be one of those people who says, you know, I really don't have to take suhoor. You should take suhoor. 
Take the suhoor because it's baraka. Whatever you eat, even if you just drink a glass of water, it's baraka. The difference between our fast and the fast of Ahlul Kitab is suhoor. They didn't have it. So one of us, he says, you know, man, I'm really tired. These days, I'm really tired. So I'm not going to get up for suhoor because if I don't get up for suhoor, I can get another extra hour of sleep, hour and a half of sleep. So I'm going to get up for suhoor. No, don't make things difficult for yourself. Get up and take the suhoor because the suhoor is designed, legislated, to give you more strength to carry you through the, through the day. The second thing, when it's maghrib time, hurry up and eat. Hurry up and break your fast. So if you come to the masjid and the mu'adhan is given the adhan, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, for the adhan of maghrib, don't sit there making the dua behind the mu'adhan, waiting for the mu'adhan to finish. Just eat. As soon as he says, as soon as he says, you pick up the date. As soon as he says, Allah, you start making your dua and you eat. That's the rahmah of Allah upon the individual. And then while you're eating, make those du'as. No problem. Take it easy and relax. Allah doesn't want you to make things difficult on yourselves. يُرِيدُ اللَّهُ أَنْ يُخَفِّفَ عَنْكُمْ وَخُلِقَ الْإِنسَانُ ضَعِيفًا لَا يُكَلِّفُ اللَّهُ نَفْسًا إِلَّا وُسْعَهَا فَاتَّقُوا اللَّهَ مَا اسْتَطَعْتُمْ Take it easy. There's an ayat in the Quran that was revealed in Surah Al-Hajj. The end of Surah Al-Hajj. How many of you people made Hajj before? How many? Anybody else made Hajj? Yeah, I was with Ibrahim, the last Hajj. Ibrahim Ba. I saw him at the mountain where the Prophet وسلم, went um, and used to hide at the Mount of Hira. And Ibrahim and I, we were at the bottom of the mountain and there were people climbing up the mountain and it was 189 degrees. It was so hot. And people were climbing up the mountain. Allah doesn't want that from you. Climbing up the mountain to do what? To get up there and to say, what? Well, where's Jibril? Well, what are you going to do when you get up there? Allah doesn't want that from you at all. The ayat in Surah Al-Hajj, Allah said, وَجَاهِدُوا فِي اللَّهِ حَقَّ جِهَادِهِ هُوَ اجْتَبَاكُمْ وَمَا جَعَلَ عَلَيْكُمْ فِي الدِّينِ مِنْ حَرَجِ مِنْ لَتَابِيكُمْ إِبْرَاهِيمِ Make jihad for in Allah's cause, the real jihad. He's the one who chose you, chose you people to be Muslims, chose you to put you on this way. And Allah has not made for you any difficulty in your religion. This ayat was revealed in Surah Al-Hajj. And anyone who makes hajj, he knows that hajj is, it requires some effort. Hajj is not easy. He told the women, the hajj of the women is, the jihad of the women is al-hajj. It's not easy. And the ayah said, make jihad in Allah's cause. Jihad and al-hajj. And yet Allah mentioned in that ayah, things have not been made difficult for you and your religion. So if you don't have a mahram, you don't have to make hajj. If you don't have the money, you don't have to make hajj. Hajj is on a tarahi. When you want to go, you go. You don't have to go to Shia. You have the money. Okay, you have the niyyah. Do it two years, three years. It's better to do it ASAP. That ayat of the Quran shows it's easy. This religion is easy. Ramadan is easy. So if a person is a musafir, he's a musafir. He doesn't have to fast. He says, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, laysa min al-birri as-sawm fi safr it is not righteousness that you fast while you're traveling. Meaning, if you fast and you travel and it's overwhelming you, then don't fast. He was traveling with some of his companions. There were a group of people standing around some other people. Rasulullah said, what's going on over there? They say, Ya Rasulullah, those people were sa'imun and it's real hot. So they needed to be given water and so the people can fan them. He told them, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the ones who were not fasting took all of the rewards today because they're the ones taking care of the fasters. This is not righteousness to fast while you're traveling, almost dying. So if you travel to London, to Manchester, wherever, you can break your fast. And Allah loves it that you take advantage of the rukhsa 
If he gives you a concession, he loves it that you take advantage of it. He loves it. The woman who is pregnant, your wife, she's pregnant. Some of the ulama of Islam that we love, we honor, we respect them, they said if the lady is fasting or she's pregnant, she has to feed a poor person and she has to make up the day. As if it's adab for having a baby. No. But what Abdullah ibn Abbas did, what Abdullah ibn Umar did, what Abu Huraira did, radwanullahi alayhim, is they told their women who were pregnant. They told their women who, was, who were feeding their babies during Ramadan. They said, just pay the fidya and that's it. You don't have to pay and then make up again. Why that are that? Why? Islam is easy. Take it easy. Inna hadha deen yusrun wa lan yashad deen ahadun illa gharaba. This religion is easy. Anyone who goes in it trying to be rough and tough, it will overwhelm him. Inni bu'ithu bil hanafiyat al samha. I've been sent with the religion that makes things easy. Makes things easy. Yassiru wa la ta'assiru. Bashiru wa la tanafiru. Make things easy, don't make them difficult. Give glad tidings and don't run the people away. That's the deen that the Prophet came with. Sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sallam. He didn't come with the religion that is chop, chop, chop. Everything is chop, chop, chop. Brother, you became a brand new Muslim. MashaAllah. How long have you been a Muslim? Just one day. Okay, you got to go get a circumcision. Chop, chop, chop. Everything chop, chop, chop. You did what? You're, you're going to get your head chopped off. Okay, hey, relax, man. ISIS, Boko Haram, Daesh, all of this stuff. Shabab, hey, relax. Well, what, what deen are you people on? You people on a religion that it will naturally go against what people want. فَبِمَا رَحْمَةٍ مِّنَ اللَّهِ لِنْتَ لَهُمْ يَا مُحَمِّدْ لِنْتَ لَهُمْ وَلَوْ كُنْتَ فَضًّا غَلِيذَ الْقَلْبِ لَمْ فَضُّوا مِنْ حَوْلِكْ So what did the Prophet say? Oh Allah said about the Prophet ﷺ وَمَا أَرْسَنَّاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةٍ لِلْعَالَمِينَ The Nabi came with a religion that makes things easy. Look how it makes things easy. In the month of Ramadan. Abu Huraira, Ridwan Allah, he said that there was a man who came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he said, Ya Rasulullah, halaktu, I've been destroyed. He said, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, ma ahlakak, what destroyed you? He said, I have relationships with my wife in the blessed month of Ramadan. I broke my fast, having relationships with my wife. Oh boy, oh no. From the Akbar al-Kabair, Rasulullah asked the man, do you have a slave that you can free? That's the penalty. The man said, no. He said, can you fast two months consecutively as a penalty? The man said, no. He said, can you feed 60 people? The man said, no. He said, go over there and sit there. Just relax. Go sit there. Someone else came. The month of Ramadan is the month of sadaqah. If your sadaqah doesn't increase in Ramadan, you're not doing the Ramadan of the sunnah. If you don't pay one pound extra, your Ramadan, inshallah, is accepted. But you didn't fast the fasting of the sunnah. The fast that is the psalm of salafi. Fasting the way the prophet was, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and the way his companions was. Abdullah ibn Abbas said about him, كان رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم أجود الناس وكان أجود ما يكون في الرمضان حين يلقاه جبريل وكان جبريل يلقاه في كل ليلة في الرمضان يدارسه القرآن Two things. If you're not doing more of these things in Ramadan, your Ramadan is not according to the sunnah that he was upon. He said Rasulullah was the most generous of the people and he became more generous in the month of Ramadan. And he would become even more generous when Jibreel would meet him. And Jibreel would meet him every night in the month of Ramadan and go over the Quran with him. So two things. The Muslim has to increase his sadaqah. Fi sabirilah. Number two, the Muslim has to increase his recitation of the Quran, his listening to the Quran, his praying with the Quran. Not just reciting, not just listening, not praying. All of them have to increase in the month of Ramadan, in the month of Ramadan. So in this particular issue, the man said, 
Uh, the Prophet said, go sit over there. So someone came in the month of Ramadan with a ten of dates. He said, Ya Rasulullah, this sadaqa fi sabirillah. Rasulullah took it. He said to the man who had relationships with his wife, come, 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 come here, come here. Here, I want you to take these dates and I want you to go and give them as sadaqa to 60 people. The man said, Ya Rasulullah, wahal bayna la biteha, yani al Medina, wahal bayna la biteha, ahadun afqaru minni wa min ahli. Is there anyone living in Medina who is more poorer than me? I'm going to go and give the dates to some poor person, and I'm the poorest one out of all the crew. Out of all these people, I'm poorer than all of them. What I look like going to give him some dates, and I'm more needy of it than him. Then what does that look like? Islam is not the religion of confusion. What did the Prophet do, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? He smiled, and the people said, we saw his canines, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, because he had a sense of humor. Unlike some of the people who always frowning and stuff like that, he smiled, they saw his teeth. He said to the man, Ibn Khudha, go ahead, you take it, it's yours. And that man had relationships during the daytime in Ramadan. And he he wound up taking a, taking the ghanima away. Radiallahu anhu. I don't know, Ikhwani, of another dars or another example of the rahmah of al Islam. And the rahmah of the Nabi of Al Islam, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, as it relates to the teaching of how Al Islam is easy. So relax, take it easy, don't be hard on yourself. Even with this tarawih, if you don't, if you don't, if you don't pace yourself, you wear yourself out. So you have to relax. You have to take it easy, relax, pace yourself, especially with these long hours. Now, when we talk about the ease of Ramadan, we're not talking about the ease of Ramadan the way you want it to be easy, the way I want it to be easy, the way the Quilliam Foundation, you guys know the Quilliam Foundation? You guys know? Zeki, you know the Quilliam Foundation? Hey, if you know the Quilliam Foundation, put your hand up. Beware, beware, beware. Iyakum, Iyakum. And the Quilliam Foundation. Last week or the week before, there was a program on the TV called The Biggest Mosque in the UK. How many people saw that? How many people saw that? Don't tell me I'm the only one who watched TV here. How, how many people saw that program? It was about a masjid in London in the suburb called Morden, M-O-R-D-E-N. This masjid was built by Qadianis, Ahmadiyas, Qadianis. It's the size of three football pitches. And it is modern, purpose-built, marble, beautiful, beautiful. Facilities on another level. And on the side of the wall, they had written, hatred for none, love for all. And Allah la yuhibbu al-fasiqeen. And Allah la yuhibbu al-zalimeen. من أحب لله وأبغض لله وأعطى لله ومنع لله فقد استكمل إيمانه. The Muslim loves what Allah loves and he hates what Allah hates. Allah doesn't love oppression. Allah doesn't love al-fisq, al-fujur, al-zul. So what did they mean by that? They meant by that we're the type of Muslims who we can get along with everybody, everybody. This is the Islam that these people want. That's the Islam that the United States government, the UK government, this is the Islam that they want. The Islam, hey, no problem, come on. You don't have to wear hijab. It's in your heart. Don't pray. Just, just, Qadianis are outside of the fold of Islam. But I say to you, just as we say with homosexuals, just as we say with other people who, Normative Islam says this is a bad thing. We can't, we cannot harm people. You can't break the law with people. You can't say hateful things and things, you can't be prejudiced and, you know, break the law with these people. But at the same time, you have to know your motif. You have to know your position in Islam. So that's the Islam that these people want. The Islam where the Muslim yadubu Ma kulli shay, just you know everything. 
fruit salad. Doesn't make a difference. Our Islam, the Islam of the Kitab and the Sunnah, is an Islam in which the Muslim is going to stand out because of his Tawheed. First and foremost, he worships Allah. La sharika lahu. He doesn't worship Isa ibn Maryam, Muhammad, any human being. Cow, monkey, nothing. He stands apart in that he prays in a particular way. Al-ahdu ladhi baynana wa baynahum as-salat. Man tarakaha faqad kafir. The difference between us and them is the salat. Anybody who bandits it, he is disbeliever. So there are things that Muslims are unique in. Man tashabbaha bi qawmin fu wa minhum. We are different. Khalifu al-Yahuda wa al-Nasara. Sallu fi ni'alikum. Fa innum la yusalluna fi ni'alihim. And the Prophet used to always make many, many, many efforts, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, to be different. Ala kullin, ikhwani, ala kullin. The ease of Islam is not according to what Ali says, as Zubair says, Ahmed says, Isa, Ibrahim, it's not according to that. The religion and the ease of, his, of this religion is according to what Allah said in his messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The Dawabit of Al Islam and what the Ulama of Al Islam comprehend. Last year, one of the people from Quilliam Foundation, they say, you know, we're fasting all of these hours, so because Islam is easy, you know what we need to do? We need to just shorten every day by five hours and we don't fast. We just leave five hours. The sun is still up, but we just stop fasting. Who 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 gave you that hukum? Just tell us, who, who, who said that? From the ulama of Islam. Wa rahimullah, rahimullah, al-imam al-albani, rahmatullahi alayhi. That Raju Abiyat from Europe, that white man from Eastern Europe, al-imam al-albani, the muhaddith of our time. He used to say over and over and over and over again during his life. He had a mashru'ah, he had a project that he called as sunnah bayna aydi al-ummah where he tried to put the sunnah before the ummah anybody who wants to know the sunnah he will make it easy for you so what did he do he looked at the main books of islam and he went into them and he gave them stuff he gave his book silsilat al-ahadith as-sahiha he gave riyadh al-sadihin to show what's authentic what's not authentic Al Jami al Sagir, what's authentic, what's not authentic. Al Adab al Mufrat by Imam al Bukhari, what's authentic, what's not authentic. Even look at this Al Ikhwan al Muslimin. Al Ikhwan al Muslimin, Al Jamaat al Islamiyah, wherever you go, they have the most harakah, wherever you go. And they have dalala in some of what they believe and what they do. I didn't say that they were all darling, wala khayra fi ahad minhum. I didn't say that. Some of them are nice people, but that minhaj and that tariqah is wrong. But look what Al Albani did. One of the main books for the Ikhwan al Muslimin, especially the Arabs, is the book Fiqh Sunnah, Fiqh Sunnah by Sayyid Sabiq, Rahmatullahi Alayhi. Al Albani went into that book and he took out what's correct, what's incorrect with the Dalil because he knows a lot of people are going to read that book. So he wasn't mutshaddid and he said, That's the book. It was given by Ikhwan al Muslimin. He said, the Ummah is reading this book. So I'm going to go into this book and clean it up. Yusuf al-Qardawi, Ghafar Allahu lana wa lahu. He has a book, The Halal and the Haram in Islam. Al-Albani went into that book and he cleaned it up. Knowing that that man has a lot of atba. So he did that thing called, Taqrib al-Sunnah bayna aydi al-Ummah. Making the Sunnah easily accessible. Easily accessible. Anyway. He used to say over and over and over and over and over again, Iyaka, thumma Iyaka, and tadhaba madhaban, laysa laka fihi imamun. Beware of taking a position that you don't have an imam from Al Islam who preceded you to that position. Who said that before you? Who said that before you? Okay, we're in Europe. The fasting is. 17 hours, 18 hours. Okay, we're only going to fast 14 hours and we'll allow three hours of sunlight And because Islam is easy. Okay, Islam is easy. And that's your ijtihad. 
But who said that before you from the imma of al-Islam? And don't come and tell me some sheikh that's in the cave in Afghanistan or some sheikh that nobody knows about him. You have to tell us about the imma of al-Islam. Sufyan al-Thawri and the Imam al-Uzai said that. And Imam Malik said that. Abu Hanifa said that. And on and on and on. Ala kulli ikhwani, we're going to open up the door right now, inshallah, as we for you brothers to ask any questions about Ramadan. Ramadan, bas, only the ahkam about Ramadan. If the canon to come shay, you can ask your question. Barakallah fikum. Fadl ya akhi. About sleeping, concerning sleeping and fasting, there is a hadith that says, Al Nom fi Ramadan ibadatun. Fasting in the month of Ramadan is ibadah. <laughs> this is not true. This is not true. Unless your sleep can be ibadah. Your sleep is mandub, is mubah. But with the right niyat, if you connect the niyat to the action that's not from the religion, then that action can become ibadah. Like the Prophet mentioned, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, tasaharu, fa'inna fi suhoor, baraka. Eat, eat in the morning, because it's baraka. Eating is nothing, but if you make your niya, I'm eating because it's the sunnah. I'm eating because the Prophet, you're going to get the reward. Wa fi bud'i ahdikum sadaqa. If one of you were to have relationships with his wife, it's sadaqa. The companion said, Ya Rasulullah, how was that? He said, don't you see if you put in the wrong place, it's a wizard. So if you put in the right place, it's baraka. So the man wants to have relationships with his wife on Thursday night because that's the sunnah. So that he'll wake up junab, she'll wake up junab, they make ghusl. So something like that is mundane, right? With his niyat, the mundane thing can become a religious issue. But for the person who just goes to sleep and he's sleeping in the month of Ramadan like that, we're saying, hey man, the dunya is passing you by. And that's why those of us who come from Sudan, who come from an Iraq, but especially Africa, my beloved Africa, those of us who come from Africa, many times life is difficult in Africa. So when you fast in Africa, and it's kind of difficult. Pakistan, Bangladesh, India, it's difficult, it's hot. It's not like fasting in Saudi Arabia, in Mecca and Medina. You have a thalaja, you have the mukayyif, you know, refrigerator, air condition. You go to the haram in Mecca and Medina, and the air condition is blowing out. There's rewards in that. But when you have to walk from here to city center, that distance, to get some meat to bring it back to cook that day, it's more difficult. In the maljaza, ara qadr and nasr your reward will be comparable to the difficulty. So don't sleep during the month of Ramadan because Ramadan is not the month of sleep. The greatest battle known to Benny Adam. Anybody know what the greatest battle was known to mankind? Anybody? Anybody? The battle of Badr. And what month was that in? Shah Ramadan. Month of Badr. Allah could have made it easy for them not do it in Ramadan. And the companions were fasting. And the prophet said, no one fast. No one fast today. Because we need to be strong. No one. And he stopped everybody from fasting. So Ramadan is the month of activity. Any more questions, Ikhwani? Fadl ya akhi nur al You know how we understand it's like a step. I mean, like a part, like I didn't get it. You what? No, no, no. Fasting, the penalty, the penalty. 
for the one who doesn't fast and he should have fast, so that you free a slave. And if you can't do that, you have to fast two months consecutively. And if you can't do that, then you have to uh, uh, pay for someone 60 days. As for the one who doesn't have the ability to fast, Allah Ta'ala mentioned, فَعَلَى الَّذِينَ لَا يَتِقُونُهُ عَلَى الَّذِينَ يَتِقُونُهُ فِدْيَةٌ تَعَامُ مسكين. For the one who can't fast, then he just feeds a poor person. That's all. Because he's ma'adhur. He has an udhr. You get it? So the lady, she didn't do any penalty. What's her penalty? We're even saying, what's, why are we penalizing her? She got to fast and pay? No. She's sick. And that's what the companions did. So the penalty, free someone. Fast two months. Number three, feed 60 people. That's for the one who he made a mistake and he made a penalty. She didn't do anything. She didn't pen she didn't do anything. Any more any more questions, Ikhwani? Fadil ya Akhi, Isa. That ayat and on those people who have the ability, let them feed a person each day, that was revealed for the old people. That ayat was revealed for the one who was old and they can't fast. As for the woman, that ayat is applicable to them. That ayat also also applicable. The other ayat for men kana min kum maridan aw ala sefarin fa iddatum min ayam ukhr. So anyone who is sick or they're traveling, let them make the days up later. So if that lady wants to make the days up later after giving her baby, she can do that. And also we have the action of the companions of the Prophet. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, who didn't make up the days later. But what she they did was they fed a person for each day. Any more questions? For the medication, you have to take medication the day. Hey, if a person has to take a medication throughout the day, he doesn't have to fast. Depending upon the medication. If he has to inhale, if he has to take something like that, he doesn't have to fast. The one who was sick, the I we just met, whoever is sick. What is the meaning of the one who was sick? He's sick and he lost his itidal. He's not balanced, he's sick. If fasting is going to be difficult, he doesn't have to fast. Number two, the one who, his shifa, his uh, becoming well, is going to be ta'khir. It's going to be delayed because he's fasting, he doesn't have to fast. Because fasting is going to delay his Recovery, he doesn't have to fast. Number three, if fasting is going to act, exasperate his problem, he doesn't have to fast. So we have some elders in our community. He has arthritis. He has high blood pressure. He has something. He could fast for the first five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten days. But then after that, he's going to start getting dizzy. He's going to start feeling bad. You don't have to fast in the first place. You don't have to fast. Take it easy. Someone fasts, he gets a headache. Just a headache. Headache? Okay, no problem. Keep fasting. But someone gets a migraine. A migraine. Debilitating. Can't see straight. Can't stand up. You know, can't see light. You don't have to fast if you get migraines. Migraines, migraines. And don't let somebody come and say, you know, I have a toothache. And then he had a toothache. I say to him, hey man, I fasted with my toothache. I had a root canal. You have to fast with it? No. Uh, who am I? Who am I to tell him that? I don't know his threshold to handle pain. I don't know. I had a toothache. I had a, I had a, I had a root canal. And all you got is one tooth pulled out. You must fast. That it? Everybody knows his own situation. Okay, Khwani, we're going to stop here. Inshallah. May Allah. Ta'ala bring Ramadan to us, inshallah, and we're all safe and sound. We go through the month, get out of the month with the barakah of Allah. Hada wa sallallahu wa sallam barakah ala nabiyyina wa ala alihi wa ashabi ajma'in. Assalamu alaikum wa